Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Vulnerable, where I get to interview Cami Crawford. She's a television host in the very popular Catfish show, as well as a producer. She's also a former Miss Teen USA, and she has wild stories that we got to share together, and I hope you will enjoy this episode of Vulnerable. Welcome to the pod, Cami. Thank you. Thank I'm you for being be here. Yes, Thank I'm very, they, very honored that you took the time to come. Are you kidding me? First of all, me. I'm honored... I didn't even see you, but I heard your voice and the nostalgia in my body just like <laughs> rose up. I was like, <gasps> impossible. Mean, yes. <laughs> even Stevens, I feel like we know each other, but you have no idea who I am. I've just watched you very closely. After today, whole life. it will be a thing of the past and we will always know each other. Yeah. Because I love befriending my guests and yeah. getting their cell phones on the way. And I'm like, um, hey, can I get your cell? Because my birthday party's coming up. Yes. And well, yours is literally coming up. Literally, I have two kids. And like w when I became a mom um, and then I moved, I moved away from LA into OC, whatever. I, I basically was like, oh shit, who am I, right? Mm. And then now it's kind of like, you get to rediscover that over time. Yeah. But then you're like, your time gets a little crazier. And then you're right. like, oh, wait, if I'm going to spend time with people, I want it to be with people I really like. Yeah. And who has time to go and find people anymore? Nobody. Unless they're like, you know, social media, sometimes you can actually, have you ever connected with, wait, this is perfect. This is a segue. <laughs> That'll do it. I'm so good at this game. Yeah. <laughs> because you're an expert host and I'm not quite there. No. Um, hey, like, have you ever met someone on social media? Yeah. One <laughs> of my best friend? friends, one of my best friends, I DM'd them. Oh, God, when was that? I mean, it's got to be at least almost 10 years now. Wow. And I DM'd her and I was like, I love you and I want to be your friend. And she was like, I want to be your friend. And we became best friends. And that was that. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the opposite <laughs> yeah. of catfishing. Right, exactly, exactly. But that was just with her. Right. I can't say the same about everybody. Okay. Yeah. Have but. you ever had um, catfishing experience? I Forgive have. me for not knowing. No, I have. Okay. No, you don't need to know. It's a very scary, <laughs> scary situation. Yeah. It wasn't a catfish situation that we know in the traditional sense. It was a person that I actually knew in my life that I was very, very close with that I later found out lied to me about every single aspect of their life. Like faked an engagement, faked an engagement party, sent me an invitation, like faked travel plans all over the world, would like text me on the time zone that, you know, Paris is on or Dubai is on and be like, oh, I'm so exhausted, I just got off the plane. But really they were just at their house, mm -hmm. like local. Mm, that's why we put those locations. Yeah. You put the location on. <laughs> My husband yeah. and I have our locations active. Yes. We can see where we are at all times. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know what's crazy. so crazy? I forgot about this catfishing that actually happened to me and my husband. You got catfished? Yeah, by our roommate. Back in the day, you know, we've been together 13 years. Back in the day, we lived in West Hollywood in a little like uh, three bedroom apartment. We got a, a, we got a roommate. We were saving up money for our wedding and whatever. We got a roommate. Nice guy, a former Marine, and that much was documented. Where did you meet the roommate? And I shouldn't say former Marine. I said Marine veteran. That's what I should say because yeah. my husband is also a Marine veteran. Um, and so we were like, okay, cool. It's a Marine veteran. Like, uh -huh. you know, um, he he was excited because he had come out and he w wanted to live in West Hollywood and like, you know, date people and, and have fun. And we mm -hmm. wanted to have fun too. We love going to the bars. Mm -hmm. And so we were very, you know, I think we were in 26, 27 years old. And so we just like hung out with this guy and became very close to him. Okay. He starts dating this guy um, and he's like head over heels for this, this guy. And he's like, I'm in love with this guy and it's getting, I want it to get really serious. But then they started fighting and he comes home one day and he tells us he has cancer. He's like, guys, I want you to know I have cancer. Like I've had it for a while, but it's come back. I see these eyes rolling because it's like, I you've heard this. To, I hate to <laughs> imply doubt on a story like that. Who right? wants to, like, you're not going to, and this is what I tell people. When people tell you these crazy things or like horrible things that happen in their lives, you don't question them. You're not, your immediate reaction isn't to be like, Are you sure you got cancer? Like yeah. what? Who does yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody does that. I think I might've did it. I think I might've done that to my dad. Isn't that crazy? Questioned if he had something horrible happen. I did because back in the day, like, you know, my mom and dad had kind of this crazy relationship at times. 
So I, I was always raised in Hollywood acting away from my like siblings. Mm. So like when he came to California finally and I'd been acting for years and really hadn't seen him much, he came and he was like, Christy, I need you to break up with this guy. He's really bad for you. And also I have eye cancer. And it was like, it was like an insult sandwich. I was like, wait, where's the good in any of this? This is also, I don't know what to believe. Huh. So I was thrown. Uh -huh. And I think that's what it is, is when you get, when people don't know how to handle things, true or not, mm -hmm. the other person on the receiving side, like they either dissociate maybe, mm -hmm. or like, you know, you get this big news. Yeah. Everyone uh, reacts differently to Right. It. So yeah. I think I did, I think I am, in being accountable for. Well, I think when you know someone, you have more of a reason. You have more context to be able to ask questions. When you don't really know someone, when you're just friends with someone, like this isn't somebody you grew up with. You don't know how they were raised. You haven't met their parents. You haven't met their family. Like it's a little weird to be like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> is that, mm, that doesn't really sound right. Wait, okay. Yeah. So he says he has cancer. Yeah. And My dad did actually have cancer. Oh, but he did. The, the roommate, however, yeah, and that was kind of that was like sort of shitty. Mm -hmm. um, um, but he did beat it and lived a very long life afterwards. Oh, great! I've that's, never heard of eye cancer. Yeah, it's very rare. And that's the other thing was I was like this rare cancer, and he pu but then he pulls out like an actual. He pulled out an actual because I think he must have known I was going to question it. Mm. And I was like 18 or 19 at the time, thought I knew everything. And so he pulls out an x-ray of the actual tumor on the eye. And I still mm. didn't believe him. I was like, <gasps> he is just next level. Like, what is he trying to get from me? So like, it is really, to be on the other side, the yeah. disbelief mm -hmm. is, is kind of wild. However, the individual that did fib if you want to call it that. Catfishing. He literally would say <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to chemo today. Um, see, and he kept this from his partner that he was dating. And apparently he did create this whole lie so that he could keep the partner because they were about to break up a couple times. Finally oh, came out. No. It came out. He got caught in the lie. Jail. Immediately. Maybe, right? Prison. Isn't it like yeah. if you were to, <laughs> there's like a law, right? Where if you actually... In, like give someone an STD. Yes. Right. Yes. There. Well, I I don't know if it's like from state to state, okay. but certain in some states I know that if you knowingly transfer any kind of STI mm -hmm. whatsoever, mm -hmm. you can get tried. Some, you some something's gonna happen to you. Yeah. Um. So that's why obviously honesty is the best policy. But when honesty. it comes to things like catfishing, I get asked all the time, like, why aren't you guys immediately going to the police? Like, this should be against the law. It's not for in most cases, it's not against the law to catfish. No. And it's not against the law. If you've been talking to somebody on the Internet for five years that you've never met and never FaceTimed with and you send them five million dollars, it's not against the law for them to accept it. And it's really I, I think that most legal systems would actually say it's on you because you willingly participated in this. Now, there are obviously like longer cons and things that take place that are. I think morally just like corrupt <laughs> and like horrible. Yes. I'm telling you. Yeah. So my mom calls me the other day. Oh my God. No. So <laughs> I already hate She's it. like 76. <laughs> no. <laughs> it did end well. I will tell you this. But so my, so I didn't realize there was so much catfishing in my life until yeah. we sat down and started talking. Um, but basically my mom basically was like, Hey, um, I'm talking to some guy off Facebook and he's no, um, red flag station in Syria. No, immediately. <laughs> no, every time this is what this he's is a general. A, this happens all the time to, to, to people's parents too. Like widows, yes, widowers. Yes. Like these are the people that I think are vulnerable yes. to that side, st that stuff. So yeah. basically she, she, we didn't even really know about it until she might've mentioned it in passing. And I was like, what are you talking about? That's just spam. It, it, disregard it. But then it was my nephew who brought it to our attention. He's like, hey, just so you know, she's like sending personal pictures to this person, not of herself, but like of her family, yeah, yeah. trying to get to know him so that maybe she, and, and, and all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, my mom's lonely. And like, she deserves love and she deserves happiness. So my brother and I spoke to her respectfully as an mm -hmm. elderly person. And I was like, ma, like, let me help you. Let me verify stuff. Let, yeah. me, let me intervene yeah. and try to like, 
like do this with you. So we set her up on a dating site. You know, we did a little, little, little Photoshop. Yeah. You know, she looked good. Mm -hmm. She had her whole like profile, and, mm -hmm. I, and, she, and she wouldn't know necessarily how to set it up online. So I did it. Yeah, she meets somebody. They're together to this day. Oh, like, thank God, it's like seven, eight months, and and they're thriving, and the companionship is real. Yeah, real. Yeah, right. Did she find out who this? military guy was in, in Syria? It, yeah, this general that was a doctor who was stationed in Syria, like all Girl. that. No, I think she like got hip and I don't know what her last communication was with that bot or hacker. It was a Nigerian scammer. I'm gonna tell you right now. No, oh, really? <laughs> yes. Nigeria. So he wasn't even in, time. you think not in no, Syria? No. Why is it no, in Nigeria? No, no, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. I don't know why. I don't, but there's like a whole world of like catfish scams that go on through Nigeria through Nigeria some we've had some in Ghana but like it's like a it's a thing unfortunately it's a thing yeah because they they know that it's they are the most vulnerable people like old elderly people and are these hackers saying, Nigerian or are they from yeah. are they immigrants from all over or no, like I think they're not Okay. Do they, they and, and obviously if they're Nigerian, but do they they speak enough English to be communicating? Yeah, yeah. And we've seen it. Like we've seen it count I mean countless times now. Yeah. And you'll be in communications and obviously there's like somewhat of a language barrier, but they're very good at what they do. I have to give it to them. They're very good at what they do. And I hate that it is a stereotype that unfortunately proves itself to be true mm -hmm. a lot of times when we're working on these cases, but she was she was talking to somebody. Yeah, we nipped that in the bud yeah, for her on her behalf. <laughs> Glad. And Glad. like I'm trying to think like AI now in yeah. terms of like what what could the implications of that could be wild. Mm -hmm. Like do you guys have you guys started looking at that or have you in the past? We've started looking at it but we haven't gotten like an AI. We haven't had an AI episode yet. Yet. <laughs> which we're like excited about when that happens, but then we're also like what is that even going to Wow. look like but we've used like chat gbt to like write like neve typed in like write a love letter to my wife and he put in like what her name is how long they've been together and it just came back this whole like lovely note that like i don't know if he would ever have the capacity to write but <laughs> <laughs> she, she laura would definitely be like um she's like i had no idea yeah exactly catfish it was like a poem she'd be like when have you been working on poetry but <laughs> People use it. I mean, it's it's like a it's a real thing. Yeah, technology, right? Mm -hmm. Like technology, and, and especially at this point in time, is in such a is such a turning point. I kind of hate it. Yeah. So, how do you feel about social media on the whole? You know, well, I say that, but then I spend countless hours on TikTok. No, I mean, no, thy enemy. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. obsessed. I watch TikToks like they're a podcast. Like yeah. I just story time. How I you know murdered my stepmom. Yeah. I want to watch it. Like I'm interested. I'm tuned in. Yeah. Any kind of well, like, and you have crazy a podcast story. too. Yeah. So it's kind of helpful, right? Yeah. I mean, it's there's different. so many different like relationship stories and things that people talk about on on TikTok and like things, common issues that I see, and I I get a lot of my inspiration for relationship from TikTok because I'm like, oh, like let's talk about this because this is what I've seen three things on my for you page that all line up and like let's talk about what it's like to move in with your partner for the first time. Let's talk about you know, trying to quit your job, like what's the best way and things like that. The thing I'll say is I feel like with relationship stuff, there's like a collective consciousness in in the apps when you're, I guess maybe when you're on that side of it. Mm -hmm. Now, being on a side of, con of TikTok, um, I don't think it actually makes you not still have specific videos being served to you. Yeah, right? yeah. Like I feel like there's still a niche within the niche for sure of relationships. My algorithm knows me. Like anytime <laughs> I get something on my for you page that's not for my algorithm, I'm like, who picked up my phone? What? <laughs> no, I'm like, what have I been participating in that would allow for this to make its way to me? Like I don't want what any conversation part of this. <laughs> yeah, was I having exactly. that my phone listened to? <laughs> the FBI agent on my phone was like, oh, she's interested in this. Let's put that on her page. <laughs> no, I'm not interested in that, and I don't want that anywhere near me. Thanks. I had somebody tell me that they were on the North Sea TikTok. Yeah, oh, ho, uh oh, ho, now that, I said it, yeah. and now it's gonna launch. <laughs> That's very scary. It's, Have you seen it? Yes. Very. She's scary. like, I can't get off North Sea TikTok, and yeah. I think I, I had a conversation about it, or I maybe looked at one and commented, mm -hmm. it, and it's so interesting. Oh yeah, I the, go on deep dives. Deep yeah. dives. Last night I was on a Gilded Age deep dive. 
Ooh, Guild, I know which one, I know which, exciting. of which you speak. Very exciting. Not the show, but like the real mm-hmm. life time period. Yeah. Like when you had to have like a, a dance card oh. at like a dance and you would like put who you want to like dance with next on your little card. And if you didn't want to dance with someone, you'd be like, oh, my card is full. Like, can we go back to that though? I would love to. Cause you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. Are you a millennial or Gen Z? Millennial. Okay. Gen okay. Z. See, now I can talk to you a whole different way. I can talk a whole different way to you. We can really relax. Yes, we can. Okay. And I love my Gen Zs. Every day I'm getting more and more respect for them. Yes. Um, Learning a lot about about them. I'm 31. So I'm I'm very much millennial. Very much millennial. Okay, Mm -hmm. great. Uh, So here's, wait. Okay. So we had a club life. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have that. Yeah. I'm sad for them. Yeah. And so I've been seeing a lot because a lot of my (laughs) nostalgia, millennial humor, like all that stuff. Yeah. And so I feel so bad they didn't have a club life. Mm-hmm. I know. Granted, there was a ton of alcoholism because of all the shots we were. <gasps> right. Shots, shots. And, and there, there were no pictures. So you could just really true. have a ball. You could have, you could get messy. <laughs> you could get really messy. You could get messy. I had some good times underage in the club. It's I true. Admit, yeah. It's yeah. Tr- and we, we, well, we came through it. I, I'm stronger because of it. it my immune system. I hate to say it, time. but I. <laughs> I loved my hoe phase and my club <laughs> yes, life phase. Yes. I still love EDM. I still try to go out with my husband. It keeps me young. It keeps me young. Yeah, you deserve. Thank you. Why not? Oh my God. And I always know like tables will turn one day. One day Gen Z are going to be sitting where we're sitting and they're going to be like, damn, I miss my tablet. I don't know what they do. What, did, <laughs> what, are, they, what are they? I miss a renegading. I miss Robloxing. <laughs> I miss Minecrafting. Those oh, were the man. days. I just feel like I, I keep saying this. I don't want the Gen Zers to come for me, but I keep saying that I feel like millennials, despite the tremendous anxiety and depression that we all have, I feel like we're the best generation. <laughs> I really do. I really do. I feel like we just I think we get it. I think we've I think we have gone through a lot. That's for yeah. sure. I mean, no, now granted, we didn't go through any knock knock world wars or anything like that. Um, and I knock on wood because mm-hmm. that's gonna save everything. We're not gonna go through any world wars because I just knocked on a fake yes. laminate wood table. <laughs> I'm knocking oh, two for good measure. Fuck, thanks. We, we were both doing it. <laughs> Piss in one hand, yes. vote in the other, see what happens first. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh God. It's so true though. Um, it's but, true. But no, 9-11, like you name it. Yes. We, we've been through a lot of different things mm-hmm. um, that were a little, what do they call them? Unprecedented, unprecedented yeah. times. Oh, our entire millennial era is unprecedented times. Yeah. It's all we have. The, we need the like merch. Housing crisis. I mean, we're constantly, I, I still don't know if we are out of a recession. Yeah. We've been in a recession my whole life. Yeah. I feel like we're constantly in recession. So Inflation? I don't know, what? what? I don't know what's ha- I don't know if we're recessing or if we're inflating. Yeah. I don't know what's happening, but that's the that's the joy. I have so many <laughs> questions to ask you on yeah. top of just hanging out. Yes. Um Miss Teen USA 2011. Yes. 2010. 2010, I'm sorry. You made me a little bit younger. I'm I sorry. Like let's that. do it. Let's <laughs> Let's do it. 20, 2014. Um, yes, exactly. And, and and really, like, you only just went into it because a friend of yours suggested that you did it? Yeah. That's That amazing. was literally it. One of my best friends still to this day, she had competed in Miss Maryland Teen USA, because um, that's where I'm from, from Potomac, Maryland. Hey. And um, she was just like, I did this pageant last year. I'm not going to do it this year, but, like, I really think you should do it. I think you would love it. There's cool people. You'll, like, have a good time. Were and you, like, like, cheering, hey. like... Were you already doing things that like made you sort of like a candidate for this type of pageant? I had never, I had never even watched pageants before. So Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was even getting myself into. I was a cheerleader, like, you know, all throughout high school. Um, But at this point I was, yeah, going into my senior year of high school and, um, I, I didn't know what I was. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what I was doing. But she it seemed said like it was a good, good idea. T- it seemed like she said it was going to be a good time, uh-huh. and I was like, I'm down for a good time. Why not? And then I came home and I told my mom about it, and she was like, What? Like, why are we doing this? What's the like? What are we? And my mom, I told she's an Aries. Oh yeah, very competitive. It doesn't matter what it is. We could be playing Twister. We could be playing Tic Tac Toe. It doesn't matter. She is like, we are going to win. Yeah, and. She was like, okay, well, it's a competition. <laughs> so it's not about having fun. Like, if we're going to do it, like, we're going to do it. And 
one amazing thing led to another that kind of just like put the pieces together for me. I ended up meeting my pageant coach who I didn't even know that I needed a pageant you coach. You like manifested it. I ju it just happened. It just yeah. happened. Like all the pieces just fell together. Mm -hmm. um, and I started training for this pageant. I had like three months to train for something that girls have been doing since they were in, in the womb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Literally in the womb. Yeah. And I, I won. I ended up winning on my first try. And it was like 61 contestants, I think. Wow. Um, my entire top five at Miss Maryland Teen USA was, they were girls who had been competing for years. Yeah. Um, so needless to say. Salty. They, they, Salty looks. They were not fucking little, with me. <laughs> a little side <laughs> they were eye. like, who is this? Yeah. And then I had like six months, I think, to train for Miss Teen USA. Mm-hmm which was in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. um, which is a whole different ball game. Cause like, you is go there from, a podcast that, or is there a reality show that there that, was a re reality show about the winners, like Miss USA, Miss Universe, Miss Teen USA. Cause okay. they used to live in an apartment together. They cut that very early on. Yeah. Why? Uh, the, we need all that drama. Yes. But, <laughs> um, that's where, I don't know if you know, Tara Connor. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. She was a fort. No, it's okay. Listen, I don't expect anybody to know anything about, pageants or anything ever. I like to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I just like to educate I, and like, I like to inform people. I love when people don't know because that's more exciting. Yeah. Um, so basically Tara Connor, Katie Blair, they were like Miss USA, Miss Teen USA duo. Very, very tight, very close. Um, I think this was back in like 2000 and I want to say. Okay. Could be totally butchering the year. Um, but they lived together in an apartment with Miss Universe and they were partying a lot. And I mean, to be honest, we all partied a lot. Like your year, your your life is very controlled. So when you do get a chance to like go out, we were out. Like we were having a good time. Yeah, they might have had too good of a time. Okay. And so after that, they they cut the whole teen living with adults because you're like 19 living with like 24 year old women who are going out and of age and like can do all the things. It's and you're, problematic. Yeah. You're not supposed to be doing the things. Right. So it's, um, yeah, it, it wasn't like a, that was a reality show. That was a reality show. What was it show. called? Um, oh yeah. Pageant yeah, place. It was called the pageant place. But it and does it seem like with like great, it great seems TV. like they need to maybe Andy from Bravo needs to like reinvest in that. And you need yeah. to host it. Mm. You do. Yeah. Manifest. I mean, this. I don't know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> I don't know that. I feel like, I'm so detached from that part of my life now. You probably feel the same way. With, Someone. Yeah, with child <laughs> Like It's just like, I feel like even when I look at clips of myself from that time, you could, if you were to play a clip right now of my voice from that time, it was so high pitched and there was so much like excitement and love about life and just like, you're just so young. Like you don't know anything mm -hmm. that's what's so beautiful about it but like when i hear myself i'm, I'm a grown-ass woman now it's yeah. di it's totally different yeah so when i look back at that time i'm glad that i did it because it prepared me a lot for where i'm at in life now but it also i mean pageants are traumatic yeah you know yeah. I, I was actually in one or two stop i was miss southern new england preteen what isn't that crazy I had an ugly oh, dress. Oh, I want to see a picture. I, I promise I'm you I'm going to text dress. it to you. I, I got... <laughs> what? You know, like Cinderella, when like the, the birds and the rats, like they make her a party dress because like the other ones like had the fancy dresses and they were off and like... Yeah. And so like she had this kind of cute party dress thing and then they rip it. Yeah. I think it looked like that dress. Oh, it was bad. It was like my so older- So you're telling me you were a Disney princess. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, thank you. I love that we're hearing that part of it. Yes. That's sweet. But it, it was ratchet. And oh. um, it was my older sister's pageant dress because they were fully in it. Oh. And I was the youngest of four. So my mom was like, we can't afford any more of these dresses because your sister's, you know, yeah. they didn't win. So here's this ugly pink oh my with God. maroon like- like weird festooning of like, it looked like the labia. It oh, was like wow. one of those like kind of things on the edging so of it. progressive. It was weird, oh, horrible. And then I didn't even <laughs> curl my hair because I was like 12 or 13. Yeah, I was 12. Oh. And so it was actually, my hair was very similar. It was like bangs, but like completely poker straight. And then I, f I won though. <gasps> I don't, what? Know, I don't know how that happened. So you're a beauty queen too. I guess, I guess, yeah. I had a little bit of a pageanty moment. Do you still have your crown and sash? 
I think so. I think my mom hoarded it. Yeah. She hoarded it for me. My mom has a shrine of mine in our house. That. Like in the in the foyer. Are you triggered when you see them though? I'm a little triggered. No, I, 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 I love it just because like, like I said, my mom is and still is, but was very competitive. Yeah. I also am that way. So I went into it like I am winning. Mm -hmm. There was no option for me not to win. Even though I, I won and it was my first try and like, Everyone's like, that's crazy. Like, that doesn't happen. I was like, no, I I was winning. Like, I had it in my mind that I was winning. You had even like a when winner's I got, mindset. Even when I got to Miss Teen USA, I was like, I'm winning. I'm I'm taking this home. And I didn't have to tell everybody because there are girls that will tell everybody. They have to. They have to. Mm -hmm. They have to. Yeah. I've had it happen to me so many times over the course of my training. And then when I got to Miss Teen USA, girls would be like, well, when I win, I went out. And I'm like. That's good. That's a good idea. When you win, you should do that. <laughs> but in my mind, I was just like, it's this not this is my, year. This, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you win one day, you oh, can no. do that. You're I was so just, funny. I just felt it. I just felt like it was mine. So I yeah. had already, when I won, when you win the pageant, they give you like this huge hotel suite and you have to pack your bags up because you move to New York City the next day. That's how it was at the time. Did you have social media back then? Facebook was in existence. Twitter was just coming to be. And Instagram was the year that I gave up my title. Uh, dang. I was going to say, like, did you get people in sliding in your DMs and like all that? I'm sure these Facebook. OK, Facebook for sure. All kinds of people were sliding in my DM. You would be. It is insane. The things that people will say to you, pageant fans, when they know that you're competing, people would be like DMing me being like, what's the color of your dress? And if you say, oh, my dress is going to be white, they would be like, I think that's a huge mistake. I think that's a huge mistake. I really saw you in green. I just feel like green this is why it is needs a show because this this kind of engagement, honey. This I don't is know. this is me and my producer brain. I'm like, know. do we need to make this happen? It's so chaotic. <laughs> it's so chaotic. I had so many insane experiences that I just like have never talked about because I've just kind of like shoved them and yeah. been like, let me just live live my life. Yeah. I was telling my boyfriend actually last night. I was talking about. The day after I gave up my title, because what people don't realize, because he was like, how many like events can you go to as Miss Teen USA? Because I was telling him that the entire year of your life is planned for you. If you're going to take a shower, it's in your schedule, like every 30 minutes, even it's on like your days off. It's like the princess of Genovia. You are, you are under a schedule constantly for they 365 pay you? They pay you? days. You get paid. Okay. The money went very quickly. I, I I wouldn't Very think it was, quickly. I don't think it's, it can't be much, right? It's not, I think at the time um, I got like $25,000, but that was for taxed for the year. Jesus. And taxed, it was taxed. And I was living, uh, they didn't have me living with Miss Teen, with Miss USA or Miss Universe. So I had to. Oh, cause you were a teen. Yeah. Uh-huh. I That's had good. to have my own lodging situation. I pretty like they would stock their Wait. fridges, but I had to like keep my own fridge stocked and do it was like a whole thing. Oh, um, were you lonely? Um <laughs> I don't remember. You're like, you're making me bring this shit up. I actually don't remember <laughs> if I was lonely. It I don't think like it'd I be... was. Okay. Because my family had actually moved to upstate New York at the time. So I was able to like go back and forth. Okay. When I had my days off that were planned, it was when it said in my schedule, go home to see family. Um, yeah. So I don't remember being lonely. I remember being um, just like, when is my life going to start? It just felt kind of like. Like you were on pause. Yeah. Did they make, did, did, and this isn't just for this Miss Teen, but like in general, when you're showing up mm -hmm. um, and sort of retained but like physically yeah. too, it's not even like I'm being retained. So I need to report to set, you know, or do mm -hmm. this for a certain amount of time. And then my show goes on hiatus. Like that's not a contractual, like as black and white as that. So you're being retained and somewhat imprisoned. I think, yeah. In some ways. <laughs> in some ways. A Rapunzel. Yeah. Yeah. Rapunzel. <laughs> um, do, do they make money off of you showing up to these yes. different places? Yes. So they get and to you, charge a fee. You don't see any of that money. Damn, that's not yeah. cool. You should get commission at least. I mean, commission. I would say that too, because like, you know, the Miss Universe is especially like big brands want to work with you. Mercedes is like sending you a car. They want you to be the and face of this. that's international. Yeah. yeah. And you don't see any of that money. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. So it was already like that, but I didn't get to just say, oh, I want to do this today. 
the day that I gave up my title, the morning after I woke up and I was like, what do I want to do today? That's a crazy feeling. That's a crazy <laughs> it's feeling. A gr- it's a wild, because I felt so liberated, but then also terrified because mm. I was like, oh my God. And it was only a year of my life, but it, it was such like a big, it was my 17 to 18 year old life. And I go from like, I'm living in this big city and I'm like, what am I, what am I going to do now? <laughs> like it's yeah. very, very weird. Very like crazy. you were in New York City and then like from there, where did you go? I went to the University of Alabama. Wait, you went to Fordham though, right? Yes. Yeah. But first I went to the University of Alabama because I wanted to be a dermatologist at the time, not mm. a TV host. This is why your skin's amazing. This, <laughs> we were going to talk why, about your skincare soon. This, this Don't is worry. Why Don't I worry, was. Facebook people that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the skin you're <laughs> What's your skin? That's what my comments look like all the time. Question sure. mark, question mark. Where's the top from? I'm like, Why are you speaking know. in all caps? Stop yelling at I me. I know. <laughs> um, But that's why I felt kind of like stifled because I knew that I wanted to take this. I knew it at 17, 18 that I wanted to take this traditional path in life. I wanted to become a doctor. So I was just like, when am I going to start that? Yeah. Had I known that this was going to be my life, I probably would have tried to explore more opportunities like within TV during my reign. But that's not what happened. It's so. a very different world. Very different. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have. You did everything you needed to do. I you did. right where you need to be. I'm very happy. I'm, I'm very happy you with up. my path. And I, and I also know about the skin barrier. <laughs> okay, back to skincare, though. <laughs> yes. And pr- by the way, because of all, all of the platform that you've grown and built and over all these this time, I mean, you can have your own skincare line, right? Yeah. If you wanted. Yeah. I mean, I would I would love that. Well, so what we we just talked about skincare. Yes. Because I, I just got microneedling. Done. I was ready to I was ready to to spill some tea about my <gasps> about spill. things I've done. Okay. Spill it. I think this will make it in. My husband's over there. <laughs> Is he like So I don't care. I don't care. You should be proud. I really don't care. I don't, yeah. Yeah. So, and speaking of catfishing, right? So like, I don't know how many of you have seen videos, um, but like there was videos of, of females that, I don't, you tell me if you've seen these, you must have seen these. So they're women, mostly in Asia mm-hmm. that like put dirt on their face and put like, like really a lot of like ugly makeup on, mm. supposedly ugly. And then they do all these things where they put contacts in or they, they, they pick up their eyes and they literally like transform themselves Mm -hmm. so that they're like catfishing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a gentleman, I think, also in Asia that um, sued his wife. I saw that. Did you see that? I saw that, but it's like, that's your problem, sir, because you should have dug deeper. Why didn't you get to know this woman before you got married? You just married her for her beauty? Yeah, you didn't look at a baby picture? Vain, very vain. Yes. I'm... Kudos to her. Misogynistic for sure. <laughs> Kudos to her. And I hope she the got ultimate catfish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like a millionaire or something. Yeah, and yeah. he was angry that he had children with her and they were ugly children. Because turns That's out his fault. she had a bunch of uh, plastic surgery. And I'm so glad you know what I'm talking about yeah, here. No, I do. Because it was like a whole to do. Yes. Um, okay, okay. Let's see. Um, back to, to back to skincare. So you got yeah. microneedling. I just got microneedling done for the first time okay. because I had some acne scars that I was like, I need to get rid of these. Yeah. And I like it, but you know, for days after it's like, your skin is very tender. Yeah. And today's my first day, like putting makeup, putting on. makeup on. So I didn't know. And I just cleaned my makeup brushes last night. And I feel like when you clean your makeup brushes, the makeup does not go on as much. Interesting. Yeah. I like dirty brushes. Yeah. That's true. hot take. Yeah, it's like uh, having a second day hair. <laughs> yes, exactly. You style the second day hair. When you hair. curl it, it curls better. Like, yeah. yeah, it's just better. Sometimes a little dirt don't hurt. Exactly. That's what they I say. I agree. I agree. Down in Austin, Texas. So, that's dirt, what I did. Dirt don't hurt. Actually, speaking of Bama, um, that was my my sister-in-law who told me that. A little dirt don't hurt. A little dirt don't She's hurt. She's a Bama girl. Really? So you were in Alabama? Yes. What was that like? For one year. Yeah. I was pre-med. I was in their pre-med program at University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Um, I loved it. But I also realize I realized very early on so like I said when I was in high school I was cheerleader captain of cheerleading squad like very much into school spirit everything like I was that girl and then I thought after my year as Miss Teen USA was over because I I graduated high school took a gap year to go be Miss Teen USA and then I was going to start college and I was like oh, well, I'm just going to pick back up where I left off. And by the time I got to Alabama, so much had changed within me. Oh my God, I feel like 
alphabet. Something has changed within me. Something is <laughs> not the same. Like I got to Alabama and I was like, wait a minute, this is not it. Um, and so second semester of college in my biology class, I remember the professor came to the front and was like, I don't even know the percentage, but I think she said something like half of you in this room will never be doctors. Let's begin. And I was like, that's you like, um, <laughs> Well, uh, how to get away with murder. Do you remember that? Oh, when yeah, she yeah. Comes yes. in that first yes. episode. It literally, it was like Annalise Keating like coming to the front and being yeah. like, none of you are gonna be lawyers. That's yeah. that's what happened. And I I literally was like, You're right. And I picked up my shit and I went to the parking lot and I called my mom, bawling my eyes out, being like, I'm not gonna be a doctor. I think I wanna be something in TV. I don't know, but I think communications is the way to go. And I was literally, it was so dramatic. If anybody recorded it, delete it. Like it was so, <laughs> it was so. We didn't do, we didn't do the, the show. We should have done the show. We should have done the show. We would have had we it in the. should have done the pageant place part two. <laughs> I was on the floor, like of the parking lot outside oh, wow. of my car, like But maybe sobbing. that was like the release that you needed to after that whole year. Yes. And yeah. that big transition. Yeah. What was dating like back then? I had a boyfriend. Okay. I had my high school boyfriend and oh, I were okay. still together. Um, we broke up years ago, yeah. but I had a boyfriend. So I was, I was also like, I, I didn't have that kind of like distraction of boys, which was probably good. Very good. Um, God only knows what he was doing cause he was in college, but mm. I'm sure he was being a good boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Let's go with that. Who knows? Yeah. I honestly didn't really care. I, feel like I was you were just growing like past my, him I was anyway. living my life. You yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't happening. Yeah. He it was a placeholder so that yeah. the creeps wouldn't like, you know, know. it's he like when lovely, people wear a fake engagement ring and they're like, I'm, yes. I'm engaged yeah, at the bar. Exactly. Like, yeah. I have a boyfriend. Yeah. yeah be gone. Boyfriend. Sorry. I'm like meeting all of these like professional athletes in New York city. And like, we would get invited to all these things and people were constantly like calling the office being like, Hey, my client so and so for the Jets wants to take Cammy on a date. Really? I have a boyfriend. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, there's like a there's like a I lot. was gonna say there's sort of like you know there. I think that the the shady side, and I don't even know how we really delved into this, but I don't yeah. know if you mind talking about no. it. No, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, like there's the shady side of the pageant life where I think people have suggested, especially on an international level. Yeah. Like the trafficking aspect yes. of it. Yes. Yeah. Which really kind of scares me about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, uh, how do they, I mean, how can anybody protect them, I guess, is the yeah. question, because it's international. I think you, if you are getting into any kind of pageant sphere, if you are a pageant title holder, you need to have such a strong support system around you because there is a lot of temptation and a lot of creeps, like just cr people who feel entitled to you and your body. And like, even when you're taking a picture with them, I can't tell you how many pictures I posed for where a grown man, and I have a sash that says teen, Miss Teen USA on it. One second their hand is here on your back and the next second it's here on your ass and you're like, and you're in a picture and you're like, Getty images, so, like <laughs> what am I supposed to do? It, it's a very weird, and I didn't really handle it very well. My Miss USA and my Miss Universe were so good at just like moving in rooms and and, I guess I guess it's a part of being a woman. Like we know now how to like, oh no, like you know, you know how to kind of play it off and not embarrass this man in front of a whole room of people because you don't know how he might react or what he might do or what he might say. It's I th I feel like that's a part of like womanhood, like knowing how to navigate in those spaces. But at the time I was a teenager, I didn't know anything. So I would just shut down. Like I would just be at a table at a gala with all of these like millionaires and crazy like executives from all over the place and donors from God knows where sitting at a table with them and their wives and my Miss USA Rima, God bless her because she was like my rock the whole entire year. Yeah. Um, probably cause she'd been through just as much. Yes. Yes. And wanted to and help. She would, she you. would, she would give me like the rope. She would tell me what to do. Like she, and she would stand up for me. Um, but we would be sitting there and like the wives were so mean. Mm. The wives of these men, when you're sitting at a table with all these powerful men and like they're excited to be at the table with Miss USA and Miss Teen USA. Teen on the sash, like, hello. But they're they're all like so like, Insecure. you know, but then the women are literally talking about you like in front of you, like you're not there. You're like they're sluts. They're disgusting. <gasps> Look at them. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. 
Should we, you be eating that? Are you sure you should be grabbing that? What? This would happen. And these were like on millionaires a wives. weekly basis. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> like the dessert tray comes around, they'd be like, oh no, I don't think you should be having that, oh. Miss Teen. Mm. And I would be like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see your husband. <laughs> exactly. Shut your mouth. Like, and <laughs> Keith, what you doing tomorrow night? <laughs> like, please. I I I was not very good at like I've never been good at playing it cool. Good. I'm not, proud of you. I'm proud of me too. Yeah. Especially at that age. But you need to disrupt that. Yeah. You know what sucks about feminism is that it doesn't work for everybody mm -hmm. that's female. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's men that are better feminists than women. <laughs> that's actually very true. Am I right? That's actually very true. It's, that's uh, some maybe women an don't believe in opinion. some women don't believe in feminism. They don't. They I, genuinely don't. And I think that that's oof. kind of nuts. It's kind of crazy. But I experienced it then. It was like they did not. They weren't there to empower us. They were there to try to rip us apart. And these are grown. I'm talking about women in like their fifties. Yeah, of course. I'm 18. Cause the shit they saw was bad. They're broken, hurt people, hurt people, yeah. all that shit. But mm -hmm. you're just there. Yeah, no, that's wild. I'm like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. And I'm actually here for a free meal because yeah, um, I'm they only getting paid 25,000. <laughs> and I don't have any food at home. Yeah, and what this am I short rib to <laughs> looks amazing. Yeah. So I'm gonna eat this. You said there was a buffet. I am here for that buffet. Come on now. Wow, so yeah. thank you so much for sharing all this. Yeah. This is so, it's really fascinating. And I love the mentorship angle. That makes me really happy yeah. to know that that does exist. Yes. At a certain level, like once you hit that level. Um, and I actually am curious, do you know of a lot of gals that are alumni of pageants that become like OnlyFans models or like, is there anything that- I'm sure there are. I mean, there yeah. was like, there was like a lot of um, post- pageant reign some would call it thirstiness no some would call it companionship okay some would call it escorting yeah there's a lot of that that happens well, right. because you have these this i'm sure i'm no, i'm like it, it does happen <laughs> because you have all of these powerful men who want to be associated with beauty queens. There's something about it. Like there's something about it. And I'm not I saying mean, you're literally a them. trophy girlfriend. Yeah, like, exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. It's like ideal. And especially because, I mean, while some of us are crazy, I'm a little kooky myself, but like, it's a very well packaged picture. You don't really go outside of that. You don't really vocalize things outside. You're, you're very much about the perfect picture. And I have never really thought about it all too much, but I think that there's something psychologically where they're like, this is what I need because I need that perfect picture. That's not going to pop off on me on the internet. She's going to make everything look something good. to lose right. too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Really, mm -hmm. really. That's why I had to ask. I was like, OF and like, but it makes more sense that you'd have more direct access yeah. two sources of 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 you know financial gain yes. essentially and listen yeah. i don't hate on it if why it would you, you why would you shame it exactly enjoy but just yeah. be safe be that's safe. the most important thing and i would actually tell girls that because they would get approached by people mm -hmm. oh yeah i was thinking about that yeah a lot and i would just be like just use your good judgment like were they fr were they friends of his or something or what are you saying in general, it was just the, the company that was being kept, it's essentially. Everybody. Okay. Everybody. And yeah. people that you don't know, guys in your DMs. Like, they want to be, they just want to. Do you still get crazy DMs? Mm, yes, but not from people that, like, you would, they, like, I don't have, like, Drake in my DM. He never <laughs> DM me. I'm actually offended. <laughs> I feel like it's been, I feel like at this point. <laughs> Where are you at? No, I'm happy to not. I'm very much in a happy relationship, so I'm very like. Yeah. How the heck did you become so well adjusted? And then, of course, you've moved on with Catfish mm -hmm. and everything else that you're doing, hosting the podcast. And yeah. How 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 are you so cool? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think part of it is I'm the oldest of six girls. Oh. And so I have very much have like eldest daughter with an Aries mom. Yes, with an Aries mom, and I'm a Scorpio, so I'm very like I just have a very. Um, like eldest daughter mindset, like uh, everything we have to, let's get it together. That's like, on let's. TikTok as well. <laughs> yes, have exactly. You seen it? Yes. Okay, because that's one thousand percent. I'm like, these are my. People. I wrapped all the presents for Christmas. Yes. Oh yes. Let's go. Yes. This is that's me. I'm like a second mom in the house. I'm like everybody. Picture. Like let's, I'm very much. That. I need that. Yeah. I'm like that with my friends like that. too. 
It, she will be. Okay. It's the, you don't choose it. <laughs> it's bestowed <laughs> upon you. So I, I think that that is a part of it. I've always had it ingrained in me that like I am, I am the one that they're watching. So I have to act right. Act right. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I have an immigrant mom. So like my mom's from Jamaica. It's very much like you know you want to make your family proud. Like I'm, I'm very much about that. Mm -hmm. But then I am in therapy. So therapy always helps. Like yeah, I'm, I'm like unpacking things now. I love therapy so I much. Love therapy. I went back in it and I was like, I've come home. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. And I I feel really lucky because my first therapist that I ever started with, I've been with her for I think it's been like four years now, mm -hmm. and I haven't had to get a new one. So mm -hmm. I f I just feel she knows all my tea. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. Kelly, shout out to you. It's yes. my girl. I feel like she's my best friend. Good. I asked her if I'm her funniest client, and she said yes, but I she could be telling everyone. You're that. also paying her. Yeah. She's telling you. Yeah. That. She's like, I'm trying to get that. Trust them. That no, check. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm her funniest. I believe I, make her laugh. I believe that though. I believe I that. live to make her laugh. Some people they they need to <laughs> they need to fight it out and work and they don't have that levity. They don't they can't bring that to them. And it's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. Yeah. So my I think that's my therapist it. texted me and I was like really shook by it. I was like, oh my God, I think she likes me. Like a regular text? Like a regular text. She's like, hey, I know you're going out to do all these podcast episodes. Uh, being vulnerable is is very brave and do, you know, good luck and be well. And I was like, oh my God. If my therapist texted me that, I probably would cry. I was, I, I mean, would be I, very happy. Yeah. And proud. So, yeah, we, we've been, <laughs> we've been talking now for a while. It's like a new relationship, right? And yeah. Like, so we've been like talking. Yeah, like, she texts me. She texts me. She texts me. <laughs> It's so, so good. Real. So therapy saves all. Yes. Um, so enter Neve. Yeah. And um, how'd y'all meet? And were they casting? Was that the kind of thing? Were you so looking for your next? I had been working as a host for seven years before Catfish approached me. And I got an email. This is how pageantry and Catfish are connected. I got an email from someone in the casting department for the production company of Catfish. And but she it was, wasn't actually them. But it was. Uh, well, I, that's what I was like. Oh. I, I thought it was a human trafficking scheme. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, this is weird, but let me go for it because I need a job and I love this show. And you knew the I show. Was, I knew the show. Yeah. So I was excited about it, but I was also like, wait, this could be anything. Cause they were like, we'd love to have you come and co-host two episodes of the show. Um, she told me that she knew me from my pageant days because she also had competed in pageants. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I, I just think that you would be great. We'd love to have you do two episodes. We're going to fly you to Iowa city. If you're down in like, four days. And I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. and. yes. And here is all of my information. So you can book the ticket. And I was on a flight and I honestly, I was in the process. I had my quarter century life crisis <laughs> and I was in the process, millennial, the millennial quarter life crisis. Yes. <laughs> I was in the process of moving from, um, New York to LA because I was like, my career is not popping off in New York the way that I want it to. I think I need to do something big. I think I need to move to LA or I was going to give up and like get a, a nine to five or something. Cause I was like, this is just, it's not sustainable. I was modeling at the time, but it just wasn't, it wasn't giving, it wasn't giving what I wanted it to. Sure. So literally the week of my move, I get this email and they wanted me to come and film an episode that would have gotten me home the night before my movers were coming. No way. Yeah. And I agreed, but I'm, like in a delusional state because when you're moving you're automatically like it's traumatic so you're like it's like the top next to a death in your family yes. or something it's in public speaking yes and moving yes mm -hmm. i was not well i was unwell <laughs> but they asked me to come i'm on the plane i'm still not thinking i get to the hotel still not thinking meet the production have drinks with the production still not thinking neve hadn't gotten there yet okay it wasn't until the next day when we started rolling and I was, I walked into the room and there was like a crafty table. I'm just like eating cheese cubes. <laughs> and I'm like, well, this is, this is cool. Like this is what a set looks like. And Neve walked in. And the thing with catfish is we're always filming. Oh. So the cameras are always on. Okay. Because it's documentary style. So they want to catch everything. Yeah. So we're constantly filming. So they were already rolling while I'm like busting down <laughs> these cheese cubes. And Neve <laughs> walks over. And that was our first meeting, which is what you see on my first episode, which is where he's like, we've got a co-host, Cammy Crawford. And that was when I met him. And my heart, I thought I was going to shit myself. My heart <laughs> literally like fell out of my body because I was like, this is, this is real. This is a real thing that's happening right now. 
okay, we're in it. Okay, we're filming. Okay, let, let's go. Like, yeah. let's do it. But I was already a fan of the show from the documentary and the show itself. So I knew what I was getting myself into. And I'm a natural nosy sleuth. So mm -hmm. it was just, I'm a natural nosy sleuth. It's just who I am. <laughs> By nature, it's just who I am. Are you, are you, have you ever been like good at like helping your friends like stock like whoever? And oh, yes. Yes. Of course. I might have to call you someday. Please do. I might need a service. No, uh, <laughs> I might call you for a favor. <laughs> you can call me anytime. <laughs> Trust me. I tell my friends, I'm like, all I need to know what color they were wearing. What was the bar? Do you know their like high school mascot? What? I These are amazing. I love all of this. I this range of questioning is, is turning me on, quite yeah. frankly. I don't need first and last name. Women love to sleuth. Yes. It's my favorite thing to do. I it's so that. easy. It but is. that's also the scary part. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for everyone. Yeah. Now, I do have one last question because we've, we've, this has been amazing and fun. And I also want to talk uh, uh, briefly about your pod. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. How that's been going yes. and how you feel it's been progressing and everything. Yeah. I mean, I love the podcast so much. Just so it's called Relationship. It's a relationship advice podcast. We talk about everything the good, the bad, and the straight up shitty mm -hmm. when it comes to relationships. Um, no pun intended, but all the puns <laughs> intended. I came up with that, so I'm very proud. <laughs> um, I love it because it's just like my own personal outlet. I'm sure you feel like this. It's like your your diary almost, and you get to be vulnerable mm. um, with people who have known you or feel like they've known you for so long, but you really get to like dive deeper. And you know, people ask me for advice all the time, and I was just like, let me put all of this somewhere like let me have an actual outlet for all of this so yeah. people write in every week we have different topics every week and um whether it's cheating or toxic relationships or body positivity or toxic body positivity which kind of the movement has oh i'm curious towards. about that toxic yeah. pos body positivity yeah well you know toxic positivity is yeah like, oh, everything's gonna be great everything's yeah. gonna, like no sometimes shit sucks yeah so like let's talk about it for sure toxic body positivity is kind of like that same thing where they're like, you should love your body all the time. Mm. It's not realistic. You have to be healthy too. You have to be healthy too, yeah. but you're going to wake up sometimes and not think you look like the sexiest bitch that's ever walked the planet. Yeah. Like there's going to be times and you should be allowed to feel that and not feel like, oh my God, there's something wrong with me because I don't feel amazing in my skin right now. It should be more of like, what can I do outside of my body that will make me feel good right now? Like, mm -hmm. is it going to Or how to can it? I use my body? I remember interviewing Curvy Surfer Girl, and um, I'm a big fan of body positivity, so that's why I asked. Yeah. And she was like, I think about my body not in what it looks like, but how I can use it. How, mm -hmm. how what, what's like, you know, like yeah. what's my superpower and how strong I can be. Right. What it's done for you. Like how much I, I had Sarah Nicole Landry on my podcast. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's yes, I have. She's amazing. Yeah. And she was talking about just like how the changes of her body. She's had kids. She's gone through disordered eating and like how now she views her body as like, my body has gotten me through so much. And like, who am I to shit on a body that has brought me 30 something years into this, I should just turn 40, happy birthday, Sarah. Um, 40 years into this life, like we should be able to celebrate it and also thank it for all the things that we've been through, but also acknowledge when we're not feeling so hot. It's okay. I love that. Like it's all right. Shape Magazine is still gonna be there. Like Sports Illustrated Swimsuit. Women's Health. Still gonna be there, I'm yeah. in it. Yes. <laughs> like it's still gonna that. be there, but you can still acknowledge that like some days aren't, listen, if I, those cubes of cheese that I ate that day when I met Neve, You're like, I know exactly how many I ate. I know exactly how many I ate because I dealt with it for five days because I'm lactose intolerant. Oh no, I love so, it. You relationship it yourself. 1,000%. <laughs> and I do often because I don't, I, first, I'm a masochist. First of all, anybody who loves cheese <laughs> yes. is a friend of mine because I love cheese. My last name is Cheese. What? Romano. Romano Cheese. Blowing the mind. <laughs> Blowing your mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> Romano cheese. That would be in like my Instagram bio line. It would be my name. But you know, cheese. I didn't. I didn't make it that way because of cheese. It well, was yeah. that way because right. I was born into that. Right. <laughs> but is are, do you come from a cheese family? I wish I did. I wish I. There's did. no cheese involved. There's no cheese involved. Catfish. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> Catfishing <laughs> to the highest level. That's so funny. I love that too. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on Vulnerable. Thank You're such you. a sweetie. I knew you would be. I, 
I knew you would be. Well, I wasn't you. even concerned. I was like, this could be great. This is going to be fun. <laughs> and so where can everyone like listen into your podcast, which if you ever want, please let me come on. I'd love that. First of all, I was going to offline about it because I didn't want to put the pressure on no, while we're I'm committing. recording. I'm hard committing. <gasps> I would love that. Great. And we would love, the besties would love that. That's Let's, what my listeners are called. I want, I don't know what to call my listeners. I'm the worst with that. Because I'm like, what are you, my vulnerable people? My vulnerable? Like, like, <laughs> it's not exactly like, we can't put merch together. Uh, yeah. I was like, what do we do? Tissue boxes? Like a no, sad yes. smelling candle? People will buy it. Oh, man. I would buy it. I don't know. Oh, my God. It, no. Yeah. Uh, like a nice little, like the ones on Amazon, the little leather ones with like a gold emboss, like vulnerable. I may need, I may I need would you cry to. with, yes. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Thank you. Um, so you can listen to Relationship anywhere you listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Relationship mm-hmm. with a T, not ship. Shit. Because mm-hmm. that's what it is. Um, and then you can follow me at Cammie Crawford on pretty much everything. But She's mainly beautiful. TikTok is my favorite. Yeah. TikTok's your fave? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love TikTok. Thank you, Cammie. Thank you. (laughs) Yay! Yay!